Unity is what will bring this to an end. Not looking the other way because it doesn't affect us in the moment. It will affect us eventually if we do that. And look at your children and grandchildren in the face, I say to those people. And tell them what you were doing when the fascist global police state was coming in. What were you doing, mummy and daddy, when this state took over all aspects of my life? Oh, I was watching a game show, honey. It was a good one that night. Or, in terms of people in uniform, oh, I was helping to bring it in, dear. And that's what people in uniform need to understand. They are policing in a state that also affects them and their children. People in uniform, they think they have power. They have no power. The power is in the uniform. They're just there to animate it and do its bidding because the uniform is just an extension of the state. The power of people in uniform is not in them. It's in the bloody wardrobe. That's where the power is. And when they become surplus to requirements, they will be uh, put on the tip like everyone else and someone else will be brought in to animate that uniform. They're just pawns in the game. And they're pawns in the game that are enslaving not only other people, they're enslaving their own families by playing a part in this. It's time to wake up and grow up and stop playing a part in the enslavement just because we think we're in uniform. These people have families, they have children, grandchildren. But what is there to fear about them? Nothing. What is there to fear about authority? Nothing. We are consciousness. All that is, has been, and ever will be. There is nothing to fear. Whatever happens, we are always that. Mind fears, because it's programmed to fear. When we're conscious, there's no fear in this. It's a shake of the head. Pathetic, pathetic pathetic and we need to do this comply compliance we need to challenge that not with violence not even with aggression we just need not to fight it we need to walk away because without our acquiescence acquiescence it cannot survive you know when you look at a pyramid We've been manipulated to believe the power in a pyramid is at the top, it ain't. The top of the pyramid is there because the rest of the pyramid's holding it up. We're holding this whole thing together. There's a story I told you told many years ago of a British comedian called Larry Grayson, who died, I kind of knew him vaguely, and not closely, but vaguely. And I went to his memorial service in Covent Garden, and this other comedian did this tribute to his life in which he read out this story that Valerie Grayson had told him. When they were going around the, the variety halls and the theaters in the 60s, um, they had this all-male show. And Larry Grayson was the only woman in it because he used to dress up as a woman. And he said that the end of the, the, end of the show, the last scene, all the sailors, all the men came on dressed as sailors, and they were singing Rule Britannia. You know, Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. Oh, I'm very pleased for you. Okay. And as it built up, Larry Grayson would come on dressed as Britannia with the, the helmet and the shield. And he would be manhandled up the side of this pyramid to the top for the big finish. And he said, one night, he said, things seemed to be going rather well. He said, and then I noticed that a sailor in the bottom left-hand corner had got rather a cough. And this cough got worse and worse and worse to the point where the sailor couldn't stay in the pyramid anymore and stepped out of it. Larry Grayson, symbolic of this elite at the peak of the pyramid, ended up in the second row. And the elite, the power center, had done nothing to bring about this. One sailor, the bottom of the pyramid, had got a cough. And the whole thing collapsed. And I, I listened to that and I thought, my God, yes. That's it. We, the powerless people, are holding the powerful people up there and they know that. 
They're terrified of us realizing that. Do you remember that movie, uh, animated movie, A Bug's Life? A Bug's Life with the grasshoppers? And um, what happened was the, there was these ants and Ant Island, as they called it, and these grasshoppers used to come every year and take all the food. And the ants had to spend the whole year gathering the food together for the grasshoppers because they were terrified of the grasshoppers. And there weren't many of these grasshoppers. And one day, they're in their winter quarters in a tree, these grasshoppers, and they've got all the food they need. And someone suggested among the rank and file grasshoppers that they didn't need to go to Ant Island this year because they had all the food they needed. And then out came the leader of the grasshoppers to tell them the facts of life when the few are going to control the many. It's a wonderful speech. If you ever can see that movie, A Bug's Life, I do recommend it. And he said, basically, they outnumber us a hundred to one. And if ever they figure that out, there goes our way of life. So we have to keep the pressure on, basically. We have to keep them working, 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 so they don't figure out where the real power is. And that's why this network of manipulation works so hard to keep us in these states. Like I said earlier, what are people leaving foreclosed homes for, foreclosed by banks that have caused the unemployment that lead to them having to um, leave their homes? Stay there, refuse to leave, make it difficult for them. Expose them for what they are. We make it so easy, the non-compliance. No longer will we just do it because we're told to do it. Is it just? Is it right? Okay, I'll do it. Is it unjust? Is it not right? I ain't doing it. We start to make the decisions on what we will and will not do based on our values and not some imposition from the dark suits. These people are going to give me, grant me or grant me not my freedom. I'm all that is. You can't grant me freedom. No one can grant me freedom. I am freedom. It's what I am. The big question, what would consciousness do? What would consciousness do in this situation? And when we ask that question, it really just changed the way we see the world. Not what would I do, mind, or fright. What would consciousness do? You know, this, this is a great line. If it's not right, don't do it. If it's not true, don't say it. And what would transform this world overnight is if we started doing what we knew to be right in the situations we face instead of what we think is right for us in the moment. Not what are the consequences for me or what's the best thing for me, how do I get the best deal out of this? What is right? What is just in this situation? If we started making decisions based on that, the world would transform overnight. These are very simple things. If we want a world of peace, then we need to be peaceful. We don't need to fight for it. We just need to be peaceful and we'll bring that about. If we want a world of kindness, we need to be kind and then it will naturally unfold. We don't fight for kindness. As Martin Luther King said, it's a wonderful saying, piece of uh, oratory. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscience, consciousness asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when one must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And when enough of us do that, what is right will manifest by definition. And we're in this position now where this, this, this vibrational change, this energetic change is taking place, where we can start cracking these eggshells, where we can start becoming the full magnitude of who we are, where we can be consciousness in the now, using mind to experience this reality instead of being governed by it, turning the key to let consciousness in. We're being offered this opportunity now. No longer can we say we didn't realize who we are, we didn't know we could do that. I was, I was kind of waking up one day and I saw this uh, earth with imprisoned and I saw this big lock and a key going in and being turned. 
I went on the internet just very shortly afterwards. I was looking for a picture, not this one, and that's what I saw. The picture I'd just seen in my half kind of sleep. And that's what we're being offered the chance to do now, to turn the master key called becoming conscious that will bring an end to this. It's being given to us, we just need to take it. And to take it, we need to say enough. Enough of being enslaved by these people. Enough of being enslaved by our manipulated ignorance. Enough of being enslaved, enslaved by the fear of being who we are. Enough. It is time to fly. It is time to fly. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.